Okay. Uh, thanks for uh, having me here this afternoon. I'll, I'll try to keep this fairly uh, brief because I know probably only a small subset of the group here would have an interest in some of the things that we do at the center and, and getting into more of the processing side of things. But there may be some that have an interest, so uh, thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, BioFood Tech used to be called the PEI Food Technology Center, so some of you may be more familiar with that name. It was actually established back in 1987 uh, to provide technical support for the industry, especially in the area of food, and then later adding in bioscience, or what we call bioscience. Uh, in fact, the type of bioscience that we tend to support tends to be more companies that are producing or extracting uh, materials from food products. So there's a very direct connection to food. We're actually a subsidiary of Innovation DEI, and uh, we follow ISO 9001. We have a number of different quality standards and registrations, and we have about 25 staff on site. We're located on the campus of UPEI, but we work pretty well only with industry. Uh, we often get mistaken for being some sort of a, an academic research center, but we do very little, if really no academic research. It tends to be very, very applied. There are three divisions. Uh, the Food Technology Division, which, as you can imagine, deals primarily with uh, food processing. Bioscience Technology, which again is really focused on more of the organic and food side of bioscience. And finally, Lab Services. So a lot of these divisions, Food technology tends to uh, provide technical support throughout the region, although most of our clients would tend to come from EDI. And really the, the, the core of this group is the provision of pilot plant facilities. So we have two pilot plants, which actually used to be one big pilot plant that was split into two parts. These are registered with the CFIA, which allows us to produce products that meet their requirements in a number of different categories. And we can ship these products to uh, Loblaws, Sobeys, Co-op, all kinds of different retail outlets, or to um, uh, restaurants and different food service operations. So we meet the requirements to actually do commercial manufacturing on sort of a small industrial scale. In the bioscience technology division, again, it tends to be more focused on uh, particular compounds. So where the food group tends to work on developing products that are involve a number of different ingredients. The bioscience technology division focuses on usually one compound or group of compounds that you might be able to extract from a particular food material or that you may want to put into a food product. So this was actually the outcome of, of an AIF uh, funded project that dates back, dates back about 10 years ago. At least it started 10 years ago. And out of that, we have a small division that focuses in this area. That group also has a couple of small pilot plants and also some lab facility. And finally, some of you may be familiar with the lab division. Uh, this group is uh, accredited with the Standard Council of Canada. And they do a lot of food safety support, especially for the seafood processors, but also for a number of other food processors on the island. And this includes all of your usual pathogens all the bad boys, Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella, and so on. Um, it also includes just general microbiology testing. And one of the other things that this group does is they can help with troubleshooting. So if you have an operation where you're having some kind of a microbial issue, they may be able to go in and swab surfaces and run analysis to try and find out where the problem is. And this group also puts on a number of industry training workshops, as does the new technology group now as well. So the real focus of our center is, is not so much to do any sort of basic research, but rather to work with people that have concepts that want to commercialize them. And often what happens is people have ideas, but they just don't know how to get to the end product. And especially where the food industry is becoming more and more regulated, it, it gets very difficult sometimes to take something that you've developed at a, at a small scale, a bench, or perhaps in, uh, in your home kitchen, and to turn that into something that the, the retail um, companies are gonna actually accept. More and more, they're demanding a lot of um, supporting documentation, they want to be followed, passive programs, which was mentioned earlier, 
uh, that you follow various different quality processes in order to produce this product. So we try to help companies go from that concept, produce at a, a small commercial scale in our pilot plants, and then be able to go right to the market with the product to see if that product is going with. So I was asked to present here today what might be of some use to cereals and, and uh, oilseed producers and, and presumably possible processors because we have been approached over the last few years by a number of producers that want to take that next step and do some level of processing. And uh, that, that's usually kind of a, a new area for, for a producer. So some of the areas, for example, that we can help, and we're nowhere near as sophisticated as Technology Crops International and for some other companies, but we certainly do have some oil expelling equipment in the center. We have uh, a number of different pieces of equipment that will allow for extraction. So if you have a target uh, material or compound that you want to take out of a raw material, you have a lot of equipment to support that. Uh, drying is another area that we can help. And we, these are just three of the different pieces of equipment that we have here. We've got trees drying, spray drying, uh, bed drying, which is a process where you blow hot air up through a screen and lift the product so that it ends up in a kind of a fluid out of bed form and a very, it, it, it causes a very even drying of the product. Uh, we've also got tray drying and some other basic techniques that are used with uh, various different food materials. And then finally, one area that a lot of people sometimes forget is that you know, to take a step forward, if you're, if you're producing a particular product and you just want to take one extra step in, towards processing, packaging can be a very valid thing to look at in terms of the technology. We have quite a number of different pieces of packaging equipment, so there may be some ways that we could give some help to producers that want to look at packaging product for especially market. So just to pull one example from one of the companies that we worked with in the past, now this is not an island company. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you may have heard of this company before, but they're a, a company that, that processes oats. They're based in Alberta, and they were doing some work and still are doing a bit of work here on the island. But they found a way to basically uh, take the oat and split it apart into a number of different components. So they started with, uh, initially, these, these compounds called avananthermides, big long uh, eight cylinder word that really describes the classic compounds that are anti-inflammatory. And you may have seen these products or the, the result of this extraction in uh, the Avino line of products that you find in the drugstore. So those Avino products contain a small amount of these antihistamine or anti-inflammatory compounds that have show, shown very, very significant um, effect in reducing redness and, and itchiness. So a lot of you probably are familiar, I know my mother did it, uh, with taking oats and throwing them in the bathtub when, you're, when you've got chicken pox and you're all itchy. Uh, well, these are the compounds in the oats that are, that are coming out of the, the oatmeal into the water and, and soothing your skin. And more recently, they've been working with us on beta glucan. Another component of this, it's, it's one of those things that causes the, uh, the porridge to get all uh, viscous, you know, very, very uh, gooey and viscous. So beta glucan has some new applications in uh, the cosmetic industry, for example. So we've been working with them actually on trying to dry some of the extracts that make, they're making of beta glucan. So these are just examples of some of the things that, again, this is more on the bioscience side of things, but things that can be taken out of uh, agricultural products that have um, more value once you take them out. So if you add up the value of all the different components, it's greater than the whole. You know, often we say the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Well, just reverse that thinking. The sum of the parts is greater than the whole in this particular case. Now, if you have some ideas uh, where you think that perhaps our center might be able to help, uh, there are a number of different sources. There, uh, Pauline was mentioning uh, in Growing Forward that there was a program to do with uh, developing products. Uh, and certainly that's something that, that's a, that's a funding you may be able to approach to support. The National Research Council has a fantastic little program. Uh, they call it the Contribution to Organizations CTO. And what they do is they have a number of different technical organizations around the region that they provide funding to 
who can work with small and medium-sized companies to do some initial feasibility evaluations up to maybe a couple of weeks worth of work where depending on the finances you have available, you may be able to get as much as 100% covered on that particular project. And then the province has uh, a great fund uh, available for work done at uh, Food Tech, which is called uh, the Product Development Fund. And that funds up to 50% for a little bit larger projects. So if you had an initial idea that seemed to be going somewhere and you want to take it to the next level, maybe produce test marketing samples that you want to send to the stores and, and try to get some feedback, um, this fund would be available to help you up to 50%. So that's pretty much my presentation. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Early on, how was your project funded by the government, funded by the city, um, funded by businesses to get you started? And and today, how's it, how do you, do companies, how do you keep it funded? Okay, uh, so I get it. you're asking about the center itself? Yeah. Okay, so so BioFoodTech itself gets, gets a core funding grant from the province, even though we're, uh, we're not sort of directly part of the, uh, the civil service, but we are still owned by the Crown Corporation. So we're a, we're a subsidiary of the Crown Corporation, is the official way to say it. So we do get some court funding. That, that funding has been reduced over the years, so we only get a, a portion of what we need to operate. So we do have to charge for services. But one of the ways that we can help our clients to afford to pay for our consulting services is the fact that there are a lot of different programs that can support and, and pay up to as much as 75% of the cost of doing work at the center. Alright, thank you very much.